of stuff. Brilliant. Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you so much for joining us, and thank you to Max uh, for coming. Just to start off... Can I just say... Yeah, go for it. My mum could see me now. <laughs> bless you. God bless you. It is an absolute pleasure having you. Thank you so much for saying yes. Mm. Um, I think just to kick off, I'm not a particularly artistically talented person by any stretch of the imagination, and I'm in awe whenever I see your work or an artist's work. Did it come naturally to you? Was it easy, or was it something you had to work at for a long time? Uh, well, I started painting in the, as, a, as a child, at five or six, doing character tours, you know, Mickey Mouse, in a basement flat, Buckingham Road, two be- one two-bedroom, poverty, coats on the bed. I was painting in the cupboard and uh, knocking out little sort of character tours. And the lady next door bought me my first set of watercolours. It carried on from there. And since then, it's just grown and grown and grown. Yeah. That's amazing. And are there any particular artists you think are easier to copy or that you particularly enjoy? Uh, Lowry is easy. Latter, not the beginning. Yeah. When I say easy, I'm not a fan, I'm not a great lover of his work. Uh, Caravaggio, yes. Mm-hmm. I think the most difficult... I mean, I was saying to your crew that I sometimes get up at three in the morning when I'm doing a Caravaggio. I, I get a withdrawal syndrome, I think. I'm just going to do that bit of armour. Then I'm there for about four hours. That's the way it is. And what, what's it about Caravaggio that you think makes it? Oh, it's the skill. So, yeah. I mean, you will see on screen a, a Caravaggio that I've done. It's, it's, it's good, but, you know, I mean, he was a genius. And, uh, yeah. and Coolidge, I love Coolidge. You know the dog playing poker? Mm-hmm. Right? I love those. Anything, the harder, the better I like. And how long would it normally take for you to say to do a Caravaggio or to do a Coolidge? Uh, about two weeks. But we're talking long hours. Mm. I love it. Oh, this is so nice, actually. Thank you for putting me. I love it. Um, You've I, got some stories tonight, I promise you. Yeah, we will definitely make sure there's plenty of time to hear all, all the juicy ones. Um, so the last one on just being an art forger and being sort of notorious for that, I suppose you've got to find that balance between finding an artist that's famous enough that people want to buy the work but not too famous, that it becomes too good to be uh, true. Well, shall I just go through... Let's do that. I'm going to go jump forward. Um, from. I'll come back to that. But I, we, were, we were not knocking out sort of uh, uh, Picasso, Rembrandt. In the 60s, we were doing things like um, lesser-known artists, like winter scenes, Dutch winter scenes, shipping scenes. I'll tell you where I used to go. Uh, it's my bag there. So we will get it in a minute. Yeah. No, I'll tell them later, I'll show them later. But we used to do lesser-known pictures and uh, find old canvases, age them up, do shipping scenes, winter scenes, and used to go to an auction room under glass, all the cracking, and you'd go in there like a, my, with, a, with a, my assistant and say, look, I've got a couple of smudges in the car, you have a look. It was a game of making sure he thought they were the real deal. We were not, we were not, we were sort of like antique dealers, but that's how we got through to them. Yeah. But we'll get back to that. Yeah. Um, I think we can start off on your life and your life story. I mean, there's so, there are so many episodes that mm. are just, I mean, incredible. So you spent time at uh, Bernardo's children's home yeah. when you were much younger, and you described that as quite a formative experience in your life. Can you tell us a bit more about what it was like being there, but also if you have any thoughts on the current care system in the UK? Well, no, I, I was there. I, got, I went to Bernardo's. Look, let me go back to Buckingham Road, right? This is how it was working in those days. There's a basement flat in Buckingham Road, and it was like my mother was from Yorkshire. There were three, th- five of us living there. It was the days of um, when you've got sort of no heating. Um, it was just the rationing was still on. And my mum, bless her, used to stand there and she used to scrub the steps every bloody Sunday, like, hello, love, uh, coming in for a cup of tea. That was my mother. And there was a corner shop where she said, go to the shop and ask Mr Peters for half a stalk, some pint of milk and some beans till Friday. That's the mum. But it was such a, a lovely community. And it was, but then we, we, spe- we spent a lot of our time in the workhouse. And we used to, mum had a TB problem, like a, it's like consumption sort of thing. So we were back and forwards there until the welfare said, right, you're off. And the first place we went to was Watts Naval Training School. And it was a, um, 
training for cadets in the old days. And, uh, but when I was six when I went in, went, when I first went in, and the first thing they do is when you're in there is that you're, uh, uh, you're, you're a fag. That means you have to do a runner. And there was a, they had your, your bully, like in Tom Brown's school days, the same sort of thing. And it, it was a rough, it was a tough old life. But there were some nice, nice parts of it, but big dormitories, you know. I was in, there was Lincoln, Cooper, Townsend and Baldwin. These are all the places that, that you know, they were the home, they were, that was the school. Yeah. And then you went to Bernardo's, was it after that or was that before? No, I went to, I was eight years in Bernardo's and uh, came out. I'm going to, we're going to do the slides in a minute. Mm -hmm. Came out, went back to my mum, didn't work there, did a runner. Got to London. I've got to confess another crime, actually. Because when I got to Paddington, I screwed a gas meter for all these shillings, walked out in the hotel with all these things in my pocket, and then I saw the only job I could get was a live-in hotel, and it said men wanted for circus, right? So I thought, right, and please apply Chipping, Chipperfields, Chipping Norton, Edna's Lane. So I go up there, go to the gate, and the guy says, what do you want, son? I said, any job, sir? He said, uh, how old were you? I said, uh, 18. He went, oh, look, I look like a baby. And I, I, I turned around and walked away and he went, come here, son. He said, uh, you ever work with elephants? I went, no. He said, come with me. And it, it was his winter quarters. So we went into this tent, a huge tent, with all the elephants. And I'm going to tell you the names, never forgot. Lelia, Mary, Camilla, Susie, Dayla, Dana, Rani, Sita, May, Mabel, Jay and Sally. And my job was to wash them down, feed them, and rake them out. I'll tell you about raking out in a minute. So, and I loved it, I loved it. And I had to sleep four days a week in the elephant tent uh, with the camels, and camels do pass a lot of wind, if you know, for so do elephants, but these were really poor. And uh, but we were at winter quarters, so Louis, Louis said, you're a good worker, Max. We're gonna do the Christmas show at Bingley Hall in Birmingham. Now, right, so the, he said, before that, we're gonna go to Dudley and do a two-week show. So I was keen to go, and I loved the elephants. So the first night of the show, he said, two hours before the show, he said, Max, put the harnesses on, paint the toenails, and he said, and get them ready. And he said, now, Max, he said, there's a thing we've got to do. And he said, it's got to be done because we can't have them doing whatever in the ring. So I thought, right. So he said, go and get yourself a bucket of water and some a carbolic soap draw from the store. So I go over there and I get it, and I come back, and at the back of Lelia, he gets his hand, and he, and he, he does that, so, and he puts it up the, uh, the backside of the elephant and pulls it all down. I said, have I got to do that? He said, what, what a whole 12? He went, yeah, what, twice a bloody day? He went, yes. I said, how much do I get? He said, 10 shillings. Is that for every elephant? No, just for that. So that's what you had to do, <laughs> because they just didn't like them crapping in the ring. You know, that was what I had to do. But then I had to run over, and, because Lelia, Mary, Camilla, Susie, Dale, Rani. Rani was my favourite. You know, when I used to do that, uh, if, I, if they heard the, the bucket rattling, Lelia and Mary had their legs open before I got there. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you, you would go, go down and see to Rani, but she used to sort of be doing the business, and she'd look at you and think, yeah, you dirty bugger, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> So, so anyway, but then I had, to, I had to rush. Rani was a bit silly. She was my favourite. And she, when, you, when elephants are chained up, which I'm so much against, they, they, they go from side to side. You know it's boredom. And you're chained up 24-7. How bad is that? But Rani just couldn't get it. She was not, her balance was gone. There was a thing where the elephants used to do the period with Sally, who was the star of the show. And I used to have to get trained in a uniform at the uh, Chipperfield, and I used to get into and, and hold Lee, uh, Rani's tail like that, pull it back. But every time I did that, she had a scatter, you know, having a wee, you know what I mean? Having a scatter. And he used to hit the board and come up like a big golden bloody shower, right? And there's, there's Chipperfield going, back for Christ's sake, smile, you're on show. I went, <laughs> so that was it. There was some horrible jobs there, but oh, I love that circus. Uh, three years. And so I remember there was this guy who was having a go at me, and I did, um, what did I do? Mensa at Christmas time. And he, he just didn't like me somehow. And he went, How do you know the elephants liked you? I said, Listen, if you've got your hand up the backside for two years, they would like you, wouldn't they? So, so, so. Anyway, that was it. It's an interesting um, job, I think, to say the least. 
Well, circus. Yeah. Oh, absolutely loved it. <laughs> Two years. And that, oh, that Dickie Chipperfield was, you, you know, in the circus, you didn't get a lot of time off, you know. You had one day off. No, no, no show on a Sunday, but I was always painting. And Dickie Chipperfield saw me doing drawings, and he went, hey, Max, do you think you can do uh, stuff on the menagerie and the clowns and the faces? And that's how I became part of the Chipperfields, and I had my own caravan. Before that, I was sleeping in the tack wagon, you know. But I became part of the family, you know. But we were never allowed to see training. We were never allowed to see that. Mm. I could, I'd take hold of Lelia and I'd take her over for training. Chippy, Chippy was there and they'd open up, but we had to stand 50 foot away because we knew what the training was all about. We knew it wasn't that pleasant. Because look, I, I, we all had a walking stick, right? Now, Chipperfield's the walking stick had a spike at both ends. They had one there and one there. I, we didn't. We had a normal one. Yeah. It was a good life, a circus. Do you think art forgery or circus? A what? Art forgery no, or circus? I like forgery every time. <laughs> bless them. <laughs> I mean, you know, even the frauds got sent me a Christmas. God bless them. <laughs> Happy Christmas, Matt. Wish you were here. And... I mean, this is going forward quite a bit, and we'll go to the slides I have yeah. to this question. Um, when you were sort of quite into, into the art, you did some work for the infamous Cray Twins. Mm, did, yeah. And I'm sure a lot of people in this room have watched Tom Hardy's film or read about them or yeah. seen, seen things about them. What was it actually like to work with them? Did you have any hesitation about well, working work with, with them? I worked with the Crays. Yeah. No, I only painted their mother. Yeah. I didn't work with them. What was it like? I met, I met, I was busking in Portobello Road. As I said, you only knew two bloody songs, so I had to keep moving all the time, up and down the line. And, then, and this guy went, and he, this is how they told him, went, hello, John. He said, do you do smudges like, I said, what? Do you do smudges like from photographs? I went, yeah, I think I can do that. She said, hold it a minute. He went away, came back with this photograph of a woman, I didn't know who it was, about 50 or something like that, and said, will that smudge be ready next week? I went, yeah, I think so. So I did it, got back to, I was living in Cricklewood actually, <clears throat> and I came back, did the picture, he came down, he was Ronnie, Ronnie's boyfriend, right, named Andrew, he had a lovely suit on, <clears throat> and he said, <clears throat> said, you got the smudge, <clears throat> sorry, I said, yeah, I've done that, and uh, he said, my mates are up the road in a pub called the Duke of, uh, Duke of Lonsdale, and I walk up there, and he goes to a side door, and I think, and, and it's very sunny outside, so I thought, oh, I couldn't adjust. And then I walked in the bar and I knew it. I knew who they were. There was Ronnie at the sitting down, Reggie's at the bar, Frankie Fraser's in the corner. That's one of their associates. Ronnie gets up to me, goes, hello, son. My boy said, you've done the smudge. I went, yes, sir. He said, don't call me, sir. Don't call me, sir. I'm not a sir. He said, let's have a look then. So I pulled it, he pulled it out of the bag and it went all bloody quiet. I thought, shit, he didn't like it. Oh, did I swear then? Sorry. <laughs> he looked at it. He went, bloody hell, Reggie, have a look at this, Reggie. Have a look at this. Bloody marvellous. He said, did you do this, son? I went, yes. He said, I love it. I absolutely love it. And he, and he said, sit down. And I promise you, I sat between one cray there, one, I was in the bloody middle. <laughs> and, and, I, and he was said to me, I love it. He said, how much are you? And I was going, well, I don't know. He said, give him a two. Now, 200 quid in 68 is like giving you two grand. And Ronnie, the gay one, he put his hand on money. He went, oh, he's a good looking kid, isn't he? He said, he looks like a pop star. And as I'm going out the door, he goes, Oi, he said, uh, he said, Max, come and have tea with my mum in Balance Road. I said, No, I can't, Mr. Road. I've got to go to church on Sunday. <laughs> oh, God, I was well out of that one. Uh, they were, they were, you know, but Reggie was all right. Reggie was okay. Yeah. Thank you. Was, um, that, was that the fraud squad? Yeah, no, it's fine. <laughs> I'm a bit suspicious of that now. <laughs> I didn't know he did that. Um, should we start going through the slide yeah. if you want to? Yeah, I can go upstairs. See it, start right. So that is. Oh, Buckingham Road there. Oh, Buckingham Road there. Uh, oh, it's a bit difficult, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, especially when you get too old, you can't creep your bloody neck round. Uh, yeah, we lived up there. there. See this? See this? Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, Buckingham Road there. Um, yeah, anyway, that's Buckingham Road, where I lived. Right. Next slide. Do, get some work on there. Yeah. Get it, keep rolling. Uh, my mother. Look at that. No, I, that's the drawing I did of her from a photograph. Was that when you were young you did that drawing? Yeah. No, I did that about three years ago. That's that. My mum was Yorkshire, God bless her. Uh, she didn't know I went into the forgery business as big as I did. 
Anyway, yeah, next slide, actually. Uh, oh, that was the corner shop. Yeah, roll that one. Oh, look at that. Isn't he nice? <laughs> look at my bloody mother having hair like that, for God's sake. Yeah. Oh, Bernardo's. Oh, I was in Bernardo's, and when I first arrived there, he said, you're going to a cottage called Joy, but you wet the bed. I went, oh, right. So I did, and I went over there. But they're cure. If you could keep dry for two weeks, you'd go to another cottage. Well, I kept dry for two weeks, and on the, late, on the bloody night I was supposed to move, I pissed the bed. But no, but when the guy came to take the others out of the bed, I swapped sheets with my next, my next door neighbour. <laughs> so the next morning, Ma'am Stanley comes in, she goes, well done, Max, well done. You can go to Honeythorn Cottage. And this poor bugger next to me, she said, she said, what, oh, uh, Tammy Woods. She said, Tammy Woods, what's this? He went, Mama, I didn't, I didn't. She said, what's this, Scotch mist? She said, that's you. <laughs> oh, that's, um, what is that? Uh, oh, that's, um, oh, is that Barsham Rectory? Yes. Yeah, I, I, was, I was fostered out there to the Reverend Soden. This is where Nelson's mother was born, uh, the Reverend Mary Suckling, and uh, I loved it there. I was um, very happy there, very happy. Mm. Uh, that's that's what that's what's Naval Training School. That mast there is from the um, um, HMS uh, Woodlock. That is where I I, I was a, had a, a runner. And uh, oh, I'm going to tell you another story now. Um, they took us on holiday. They took us on holiday to um, what was it place in Norfolk uh, in Sheringham. And uh, this is where I became very crafty. You had to be streetwise when you're in the home. And um, it was, um, he said, boys, we're going to have a run today. And uh, he said, now assemble outside on the gate. And we all got outside there. And he said, this is a hill you'll be running. It was called Beast and Bum. And I thought, oh, I'm not doing that. The reward was five shillings, so I wanted to make a crystal set. So what I did, they all started off, all the colours, green, red and blue. I ducked down into the bracken and the bushes and I watched them all go up. And as I came, as I watched them coming down, I shot out there and I was running towards the mast and they kept saying, is that Branford in front? He's not a sporting type, how's he out there? <laughs> anyway, I got my five shillings. And the other story is, we had a girls' um, a, a section there uh, from Welling Garden City. And this is a two, I was getting a bit, you know, I was beginning to notice girls at seven or eight years old. So I'm bouncing on the beach with this lovely girl with great big boobs bouncing around. I think, oh, I like that. Anyway, I went up to her and I kept hanging around her. And she said, what do you want, boy? I said, I don't know. I said, you've got seaweed sticking out your knickers. She went, what? She, you've got seaweed sticking out your knickers. She said, that's, that's pubic hair. And she went, go away, boy. So when I got back, I did a drawing of it. And the master spotted it in the camp. And he went, what's that? I said, oh, that's public hair, sir. He went, what? Public hair, what do you mean by that? <laughs> he said, and I've got, I've got the strap for that. I've got six of the bloody best. Yeah. yeah anyway. Yeah. And well, then, are you still involved in Bernardo's? Yeah. Yeah. I, I've made, as my daughter knows, bless her, she, I used to go to these functions and give them a painting and, and make two or three thousand. Yeah, I've made about... I'm not brag. Well, no, I can brag because I did it. I made. It's not. I'm not repenting of what I've done. I'm not doing that. <laughs> Too far gone on that one. But I'm giving back to what. But Nardo's was marvellous. I would never have painted. I'd have never seen that girl with the old uh, out of the knickers, would I? Mm. And that's the chiffles. That's the circus you were part of. Yeah, that was that Sally there. That Sally up in the front there. So you joined them when you were 16 and you left yeah, the circus I, when you were 18? Yeah, that's when I, I decided to, to go down to um, London, yeah. And I started busking, but as I said, I only knew two songs, so I had to keep moving all the time. And, uh, you know, and that's when I met... Then I met um, my mentor, um, uh, Sammy Cohen. That's when I got into the real forgeries, you know. But you see, when people say Max Braddock, number one, Britain's number one art forger, it's, you, you are not sort of faking paintings of Picasso, and I wouldn't want to fake his anyway. I mean, you know, it was just normal. I was doing pictures, lesser known paintings. Look, uh, I'll tell you another thing. Is my bag there? Yeah. Can you get that bag for me, buddy? Now, this is a sensation. You've never known this. I must be the only person to be barred from eBay for life. <laughs> and I'm going to show you. 
and I love this story. Right, now, right, oh, it's here. I'll go to this one here. I brought this up specially to show you. Now, this is not a Besic, but it's a fake. So, I saw in a magazine, paint your own ducks. And, and you can buy them all white, all like that, you know, but not painted. And even had they were hollow, the string, everything. So I ordered three boxes. So I did the three, put them on eBay, for, I remember it, 12 quid. They went for 150 on the first night. I thought, hello, another seven boxes. <laughs> so so <laughs> after about, after about the, the, the tenth box, eBay went, hello, Mr. Brander. It went, yes. He said, well, rather a lot of ducks coming our way. Went, What's that all about then, sir? And he went, we think they're fake. I went, I didn't say anything about them, sir. He said, we're going to have to ban you. I said, is that for life? He said, I'm afraid so. He said, so I'm out for a duck then. He said, you're out for a duck. So that was it. <laughs> so I'm now banned from eBay for life. <laughs> so, but that's what I would be doing. Uh, these are rare ones. You know, uh, I can say this. I was penniless three years ago. My daughter would understand that. Um, and then suddenly, this changed my career <laughs> because I got all the publicity from this. A radio program in what I do, Lad Bible. Mm -hmm. I did Vice TV. I got eight, and yeah, I got all this attention. So I'm loving it. Thank you very much. <laughs> and, and my mum would love all this bliss. But yeah, anyway, be careful buying these things. You don't know Max did them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Um, Yes. Yeah. So these are more of the elephants, aren't they? So do you still are you still able to identify which ones? Oh, bless you. Now this is this is strange because that uh, my uh, my ghostwriter wrote written, did my book. Um, that is there's Mary Chippard in the front, and at the back there there's um, Dickie in the middle there, and I'm right at that. You, you see those radio uh, carriages at the back. Now I travelled overnight with those buggers, you know, and if you think. That, and a, when a show, when, a, when they pulled the big top down, they would take the elephants down to the, lo the, go the um, loading bay. And Dickie Chipper said to me one day, first time I ever was on there, tell me six elephants, one in one, six in that, six in the other. And he said, and he said, go on, boy. I had to crawl between the elephants, right? Chain them to the side of a railing all around the carriage. But as soon as the elephants get in, they start having a scatter. So it's hitting the bloody boards. And then they start dropping their bloody great don up. You know what I'm saying? So it's hitting on the shoulder. Go on. But that is amazing. Um, that was walking. See, what we'd do, we'd walk them up to the, 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 the station. That's where the parade would start, through the streets. Yeah. That's Lelia in front, Lelia, Mary, Camilla, that's right, that's, yeah, I've that got a lot of memories there, bless them. That's, that's me right at the back there, see that little dark figure there, look, can anybody see it? At the very back, yeah. Yeah, that's me. Oh, I don't write it. Oh, that's not me, busking. <laughs> that's not me. Oh, that's what it used to be like at Portobello Road, you know, I used to love that, yeah. Well, oh, there they are. That's um, Violet. That's for Violet Cray. Uh, there's Reggie. Reggie's there. That's Ronnie. Th Ronnie, you know, was the gay one, you know. But, uh, but you know, there was a film, um, I think the Spandau Valley group, is they called Spandau Valley? Yes. They did the first one, then, didn't they? Mm -hmm. And they were the Kemp brothers, right? Do you remember that? Am I, am I, am I out of this one? No, I think you're right. Yeah. No, they did, the, they did the craze, didn't they? Mm -hmm. But they nothing like them. Seriously, the other one uh, is that all right? That night, yeah. That um, the legends was 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 bloody good. Was that really good? Was that yeah. close to actually what Especially they were like? Especially Ronnie he got that yeah. off to a T. That was clever. That was clever. I mean, he had, he was like he had strange eyes. You know why his eyes? He didn't blink. You know why? Because when you're banged up in a cell, uh, you you don't blink. You, don't, you because your lights run on all night. Here, I'll tell you another thing. Did you know I was actually fake in, in prison? I was forging from prison, yeah. No, Anybody how, heard of an artist? How did you manage this? Well, I, Sammy Cohen was my mentor. I told you about him. He used to come and see me. I got, I got, eight, I got eight months, right, uh, for, for knocking out something. I don't know. I think it was, a, I think it was a, an Erte drawing. And I was banged up in Dorchester. And I, I managed to get a single cell. And uh, Sammy came to see me and he said... Now, I wasn't a high risk, so you're allowed to sort of have contact, you know. Like, he came in as my dad. Hello, dad, and all that. They thought he was. Mm. And he said, uh, you fancy doing any work, son? I went, what am I going to do it? Send it out by bloody post. He went, no, up his sleeve. 
he had six pieces of rolled up paper from the nick from the library. He used to go with his razor. Uh, sorry about this, he used to nick the old pages, you know, the plain page. So we could do a Samuel Parva drawing on it. So he'd come in and go, How are you doing, son? All right? And then he'd go out and then he would slide out six pieces of paper rolled up, up my sleeve, and you'd be close and you go, and you go, right, and you say, Can I back to my cell, God, Nick? Went, yeah, go on. And, and Samuel would go, Bye, son, see you next week. And I'd go up to my cell. Press them in the Bible and do Samuel Palmer's drawings, pen and ink, pen and ink, not painting, pen and ink. Used to do the same thing, pick them up, go back there. See, I did a painting for the governor, right? And he, was, he, never, he never gave me a cell search because I was like, you know, I was all right. So I said, and he came one day and I got two bloody Samuel Palmer's, but he never picked my, he normally used to pick up my Bible. And he went, oh, I'm glad you're reading that, Max. I went, I am, sir. Going by the book now, sir. No more fakes for me, buddy. <laughs> I do get withdrawal symptoms. <laughs> I do even now. I even now get that. Oh, I'd love... Oh, I've got... Oh, can I just... I've got a canvas here. I'm going to show you something. Do that. I'm going to show you. Now, I'm going to... This is good. You'll love all that. Now, that... If anybody wants to do forgeries, you know, look and listen... Do you want to grab these yeah, can we open it up, madam? Yes. Nice. Right. right, there's a canvas in there. Is there a canvas in there? Yes. Ah, look. Okay, just take that off. Now, you see this? Do you want to no. grab the easel? Yeah, no, no. No? No. Oh, yeah, you can actually. No, I think I'll... No, it's all right, put it on the easel. Put it on the easel? Yeah. That's what we'd be looking for. Can you do the, the back of it, love? The, the, other, the, the back, yeah, the back, yeah. That's it. That's what we'd be looking for in an antique shop or on a market. Perfect. It's not, it's not mitered, it's wedged. So uh, we'd prime it, scrub it down, do a painting on it, you know, shipping scene, and then this is called bee glue. Right? This can, it looks like lentils. You, buy, you could buy that in my day for about, for about a great big two or three pounds of it. Put it in hot, uh, cold water, overnight goes to a jelly. Onto the stove, next morning it goes to a varnish. Varnish it all over, take it to a heater, but not dry heat, electric heater. In fact, I've still got the electric heater at home. And you circulate the painting to make sure the heat is going everywhere, all over that. And you can actually hear it bloody cracking. And if you want more cracks, just run your thumbnail at the back and you get some. And then once you've got that, you've got the bee glue, go to your tap, wash off the bee glue, right, warm water, on the floor, hoover on the floor, all the, you empty your hoover on it, brush, your, brush it all off the surplus, all the cracks are filled with dirt. On, uh, back into the, uh, the frame, old nails that have been in the garden for six months, tap them all in, under glass, talcum powder about, take the smell off it, down the auction, hello John, got smudge here, do you want to have a look at it? We were, we were so good at that, we would go my, with my, he was father and son, we used to, we used to rehearse in Cricklewood and go like, don't forget, you, you, we're, we're, we're father and son, all right dad, okay dad. So we used to go in with a, what we call pot boilers, do you know pot boilers? Rubbishy pictures, absolute rubbishy pictures. And he, we knew, we, don't forget, they're clever buggers, they are clever. And we used to put a lot of junk pictures, badly painted paintings, and then we'd put a Samuel, not to say, an uh, Albert Darby, like, shipping off Dover, looking the business, under glass. We'd make sure he could see it, and then he'd be, he'd go, no, 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 rubbish, right? What's that there? And I'd go, here, Dad, pick up that picture. He likes to one with the boats on it. That's how we used to tour. <laughs> we were sort of dumb. We knew nothing about art. And you go, yeah, that's quite a pleasant picture. And I go, Is, what's it with the boats on? Is it anybody special, sir? He went, well, it's probably Norwich School. Did you paint it in Norwich? Oh, God, we really set them up. And you go, yes, yes, it's a, it's a very nice painting. Do you wish to put it in the auction? And then we used to go into the auction on a Friday and stand next to my picture with a brochure, pretend we're potential buyers, and watch the comments coming up and go, think, yeah, I've got him, got him, got him, got another one. So in the end, you've got about six people who are going to have a bid of that. We used to go in there, we used to ring it. Do you know what a ringing is? Bid it up. Yeah. He was at one side, that and my, my dad or whatever, and I was the other. And then it would have a sign. I'd probably straighten my tie, and we'd get it up to about 1,500, two, or 1,000 or 2,000, and then we used to pull out on, 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 on the, when it gets too much. And then and that's how we used to do it, we used to ring it. That's amazing. So just to go over how you made this aging process, you find a frame like that, just to make sure everyone's like knowing what we're and doing this weekend. 
Mm. Um, if we find a frame like that, we get this bead glue, we melt it down. I've got to do the picture first, though. Yeah, so you paint it, paint it first, then we cover it in the oh, glue. Wait, we're playing cat. Look, it's a snow <laughs> scene I did. <laughs> And then some water there, buddy. Yeah, of course, absolutely. Yeah, and on. then you put the bead glue on there. Yeah. You sort of you let it dry, and you put it over the heat, and it starts to crack, and that's how you get that old textured look yeah. of the old paintings. But you were saying earlier how today it'd almost be impossible oh, to get couldn't. away with forging uh, like that. They and they they know that for a fact that um, you know they can they can tell you when what the oil even which oil paint you've used. You know. In my day, they didn't have that technology. Don't think it was in 1968. But it, the whole point of uh, look, I do stand guilty. I, I mean, I, there's a few thousand fakes out there. I can, well, probably more than that. <laughs> yeah, and there's another secret. And is there any people that do oil paintings here? Come on, tell me. Who? Yes. Do you know, if you use oil paints, you think, if you use oil, if I did a painting on that in oil paint, it wouldn't dry for at least two weeks. But there's a secret. You know, ordinary house paint, undercoat for a door, just mix that with your oil and it, put a hairdryer over it and you've got it in about half an hour dry. That's why we could turn out so bloody many. Because <laughs> the, the auction thing, you see, the auctions were totally fooled. I mean, I do feel guilty about what I did. No, I don't really, actually. I don't feel guilty. <laughs> Bloody don't feel guilty. I feel, I wouldn't, if someone's going to ask me, do you have any regrets? Not a thing. Not a thing. I'd do it all over again. And so, I mean, nowadays, do you think, looking back, sort of the skill that it took to, to forge art in the 60s and the 70s, today... Is it even possible? Could you even see a route of doing it? There's no way at all. I, I, I couldn't. I mean, I don't know. We've got a certain friend that tried to get one through by doing a Lowry and they sussed it straight away. You know, I mean, she... she and, uh, well, she, my daughter knows the artist, but he tried to do a Lowry, but honestly, it was embarrassing. And what she said at the end of the day, do you think he's a good forger? She said, well, he calls himself the greatest art forger in the world, which I don't like that, because I'm not. I'm not. Where have you been? <laughs> Where so, you been? You got the fraud squad out there? Yeah, <laughs> yeah the fraud squad. We'll, we'll let them yeah, in later. On, um, but that's why we can plan scuppered. But so, is this one of the ones that? You oh yeah, that's me. Ah, uh, uh, see that? Uh, that's me doing a. That's a. Um, oh, who was that? I got nicked in the. Uh, just that picture. Had it taken on the su on the Sunday afternoon, and the bloody fraud squad were outside to, to get in there. Yeah. Yeah, that's um, Vanderville. That's the Vanderville I did. Next is that, oh, that's me. Look at that. Look at that bloody hair. It's criminal, isn't it? <laughs> look at that. Oh, that's another Vanderville. Look at that. How much would you have to sell those for? Oh, I didn't get a lot in those days because the one thing today is the dealers keep you down. You know, I'm not well. If you could, if I go into the lanes in Brighton with a painting a few years before I did before I became famous for my ceramic ducks, which I am famous for. I, I used to give you nothing for them, but now everything's changed. Now so I do Banksy's, Ertes, Farnicas, Louis Wayne, Coolidge. Is there any? Is there a Coolidge there coming up in a minute? There should be one coming up. Yeah. Oh, oh, look at that! Look like bloody Rasputin. That's me. <laughs> I, I, look at that hair look. Yeah. I won a paste the road safety competition in South End. Oh, that's mine. That's mine. That's a copy. It's on new canvas, so next one. Oh, that's my Dutch winter scene. Yeah, that's that. Oh, there's my winter scenes. That's a bit of one. Yeah. Oh, that's mine. Are there any that you're particularly proud of? Is yeah, there I'm one? I'm proud of that. that. Yeah. <laughs> that's on new canvas, though. Yeah, well, that's not. Oh, oh, yeah. These are big money. These are bloody big. You know, they're, that's the pot belly black. I made it. I did so well in Portobello Road with those. Um, you could do those on panel as well, which is good. All copper. Yeah, is there another one there? In mind? Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Yeah, that's another. Oh, that's, uh, you know that is? Samuel Palmer. That's a fake. <laughs> oh, who knows that? Louis Wayne. Anybody Louis Wayne? No? Okay. Well, anyway. <laughs> Big money. That's a Louis Wayne. He, yeah. He, he only, oh, oh, yeah, oh, look, that's not bad, actually. Uh, my good friend Johnny owns that. Look, he's there, look. He loves it. If that was on old canvas, I'd get away with that one. 
Oh, I would. If that was on that canvas in there, I'd bloody get away with that one. You were saying how the sort of the boat scenes, the stuff that you specialised in. So, mm. is it ones like that that you were particularly adept at? Yeah, no, Vickers, uh, Albert Darby, Jonathan Crone, anyone. You see, if you, you in the sixties, uh, sixty-eight, sixty-nine. In you know London, you could really get away with it because they didn't have any, they, the technology, you know. Mm. But we we know. Well, uh, can I tell you another? Has anybody heard of Tom Keating? No. Well, Tom, yeah, he, he wasn't that good. I'm not decrying an artist, but he, I, I, oh, there's something coming on there. I, there was an artist in called Kriegoff, and uh, he painted in in Canada doing uh, moccasin sellers and like trappers. Now, I used to, when I was in my poverty days, which is, you know, well, not, not so long ago, um, I used to go to a restaurant in Brighton called La Dolce Vita, and uh, we were always broke. A guy I used called John Bradbury and I, we used to go, can we have a meal? We used to say, give him a bloody painting for a month's meal and a bottle of wine. <laughs> and, and I didn't know, but an American came over and bought those Kriegoffs, they went to America, and now they're selling for 50, 60 grand. And I did them. I did them. <laughs> so, you know, it don't seem right, does it? You know. He, I, I, did a, I did a link up to Canada, and he said, I said, yeah, I did them. They all know I did them. But yeah, Kriegos, yeah. So there's still plenty of yours floating around. Oh, there, there. I can see my work. I, I've, been, I've been straining my bloody neck over here. <laughs> so, anyway, yeah. Go on, next one. Oh, look at that. That, I love that. Can you look in? That's Coolidge. I love that one. What, why do you particularly like this oh, one? Oh, it's difficult to do, but it's bloody fun. Yeah, <laughs> I loved it. Yeah, you know, the hardest thing is getting the expressions of the dogs to make it look real. I love that one. Yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do another one of those. But I've got to do my good friend, Johnny Bless him. He's a lovely guy, actually. Yeah, he's a lovely guy. I'm doing his uh, um, Caravaggio. I'm nobody. Yeah. Uh, oh, you know where that is, don't you? It's not Holiday Camp, I can assure you. It's, that, that it's Dorchester, Nick. So you were in prison, what, was it three times? Because the first time you were stealing, was it a clock? Oh, yeah. And um, then the other times because uh, you were first, forgery? The, well, I, I thought I'd go and follow the hippie trail down to um, um, Cornwall. You know, guitar on the back, cream teas and all that in St Ives. <laughs> and I got, I got down there and I got as far as Dorchester. And I, I, I ran out of money, so I slept in the railway carriage. And I thought, you know what it's like trying to sleep in those railways. It was about five in the morning. I got up, and, I, and it was in Dorchester. So I walked up the high street, and no one's around. And I saw this guest house. You know, not a proper hotel, a proper guest house. So I got up the stairs, and I thought, having a look around, no night porter. And I saw this chandelier. I thought, I'll have that. So I took this bloody chandelier down. <laughs> As I'm the, passing the dining room, I see this clock, 100-day clock. So I go outside find a barrow, you know, like a porter's wheelbarrow, put it on, put it on a blanket and wheeled it down the high street at five in the morning. And I got to the station and this guy was a bit suspicious of me and I put it in my case and I was waiting outside because I was starving hungry, I hadn't eaten for two days. And the lady came out and said, you waiting to open up, darling? I went, yeah. She said, come and have it. I said, I've got no money, darling. She said, come on, have it on the house. So I'm having a lovely meal, egg and bacon. Suddenly, who walks in? Bloody CID. And he comes over and he goes, hello. Where are you going then, son? I said, they're going down to follow the hippie trail, sir. So he went, what you got in your case there? Don't forget, he already knew about the crime because the owner had already phoned the police. And he said, do you normally carry a 100-day clock with you and chandelier? I said, no, I'm having it repaired for my granny. <laughs> <laughs> so, so what he did, he bloody nicked me, and I, I was in court the next day, banged up overnight, and the next morning I came up in front of a magistrate, and because I refused to give my mum's address, I didn't get my mum to know, she banged me up for three months. So I walk in, the first time I've been in there, what an experience, you know. I was banged up with a three cell with a, 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 a stowaway from Curacao and two guys that had been watering down the paraffin. But then I asked the governor for a single cell. And then everybody knew that I could draw and paint. So all the old lags, the, you know, the print out the old one, they kept saying, yeah, do a drawing. And I became what we call a tobacco baron. That means you... You do a drawing and they give you a quarter out of tobacco because I was a smoker then. Mm. And then I used to have a minder called McGinty who used to go and collect all my debts on a Friday. So I became a huge load of tobacco. Tobacco baron. 
Um, I'm just conscious of time and wanting to make sure the audience can ask some questions. Oh, yeah, yeah. Keep it real. Keep it nice. No nasties. <laughs> so if anyone does any I'm questions... on a bit now. Please raise your hand. We'll try and get a microphone to you to make sure it's clear. So if anyone does any questions at all... Come on. How to on, forge art. Anything about life? Yeah, sorry. In the row here. I've been told by some art teachers that it's harder to come up with your own original artwork and ideas than it is to copy, um, which is why often... What, what, what is that? Sorry? What, sorry, what did... I um, can't, can't quite... What is it? Um, can you just repeat I'll it? say it again, yeah. sorry. Um, so often, um, traditionally, art students copy as a way to learn. Yeah, they do. Um, but it's considered at least by art teachers, to be better to have your own original ideas. Mm, no, no. Do you agree with that? No. Since, do you think it's harder to come up with your own ideas or harder to forge? No, you are. No, I, yeah, I, I know what you're saying. I, yeah. No, I definitely don't. I, I, I do repent of my sins, honestly. Mm. No. <laughs> no, you're right. They do copy. They could be, could be forgers. You never know. Uh, no. Another one... Would, quite, uh, would you describe yourself as having a particular style of art which you personally like to draw for your own pleasure rather than copying? Uh, oh, I, I mean, my daughter knows that I used to do these, didn't I love, she do these character chores in, you know, like uh, Gerald Scarf, but no, nobody's had to know who Gerald Scarf or, you know, like a bit, uh, a bit like, you know, I don't know, what, they were cartoony. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, like, when I was in prison, when I was in Nick, I'd, for, the, for the, uh, one of the screws, I did the, did anybody remember the, the Great Train Robbery? I did it, no, no. I mean, God, isn't it awful when history, I'm yeah. that old and people say, do you remember this? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, the great train robbery, I did a picture for the governor of them escaping, you know, from Leatherslade Farm. And that was caricaturist, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that's your, like, almost nat your natural go-to style is yeah, as a caricature. What, when, you, when you've been faking as long as I, you just, I, I mean, a, ju a child judge said to me, Mr. Brandrick, why do you persist in doing this? You're such an accomplished painter. I said, I get withdrawal symptoms when I see it on campus. I've got a paint on the bugger. And that's what I do. <laughs> what I do. You can't help it. Right, anyone else got any questions? Come on. Yes, on the front row, just at the back. Hi, thank you so much. I was just wondering, um, what was the first thing you forged and how did that come about? The first work? What was the first work you like, Oh, uh, I did, um, I did a shipping scene, you know, shipping off, uh, like a Turner. But yeah, yeah, that's the first one I did, a Turner painting. I love Turner. I love all the, the shipping scenes, you know. I mean, as I said, well, you couldn't walk around with a Picasso or a Rembrandt. Even Larry, in my day, Larry was just about becoming popular, you know. But, you know, no. Yeah, that's the shipping. Because, you know, you could make, I could make two or three thousand on one picture. Really, I could. And listen, I did it for nearly 15 years. Because I think how many are out there, for God's sake? The trouble is, if you think, well, I've got an investment on you. No, you've got a Max Brown on you, will you? <laughs> Now, perhaps I will become an investment, I don't know. It's funny now, all people want to buy uh, because of my notoriety, I think. Wouldn't you say that, Bunny? Well, yeah. yeah. Anyway, come on, another question, another please. Yeah, in the second row, just here. I'm obviously not going to ask you what this exactly is, but do you think you would be able to identify the paintings that you have forged? Is if someone was to say, do you think this is yours? Obviously, you wouldn't tell them, yes, it is. But in your mind, would you be able to identify it? Did you get that? Yeah, could you identify paintings that you thought? Yes. And, yeah, <laughs> I did, because I was in Arundel High Street about two years ago, and this guy hated He threw me out, and I saw, I saw a shipping scene, really good one, a big frame. And I said, how much is the ship? He went... Seven and a half grand. I went, God, I didn't get that much for it. He went, what do you mean? I said, I didn't get that much for it. What are you talking about? I said, I did that. He went, bugger off. I went, no, I did it. I said, I bet you any money there's a label that said walkers at the back. He said, you've seen it. I said, no, I haven't. Then I said, do you know what I'm all about? And I showed him a little bit of history. I said, seven grand. He said, what do you get for it? I said, 250 quid. <laughs> Bloody criminal. <laughs> Not good. Oh, I'd love to. So he's in the middle over there. There's a mic just here. How That's come good. you hear these and I don't? Um. 
Um, oh, sorry. I just wanted to ask what sort of paintings you've got hanging up in your house. Do you uh, have your own? He keeps own buying them, this bugger down here. <laughs> he keeps buying them. It comes in there. Uh, is, is, is it finished yet? No, I'll have it now then. That's what he does. <laughs> He's my lo I love this geezer. No, then. Are there any paintings you wish you would have kept, though? Oh, yeah, I wish I kept my Coolidge. Yeah. But, you know, when it went down the stairs... Oh, can I tell you, my room is... I, I live in the past. I've got decorations that have been up for 11 years. I never bothered taking them down. But they're all from the 1950s. So anybody coming around thinking, oh, is it Christmas? No, I keep the decorations up. I've got old telephones. I've got a TV from the 1950s, which I, it doesn't work, but I just like looking at it. And I, I just love this, you know. And when, that, when I did that show Coolidge and it went down the stairs, I thought, what? I've got a few thousand. What's the point? I still like it there. I've got a great gift from my friend here. And I've got a, an original Cray that Johnny gave me, bless him. You know, Reggie Cray wasn't a bad painter. Yeah, Johnny gave me that. Lovely. Anyway. But nothing of your own you haven't kept? No. Keep selling it, do not I? <laughs> Yeah, I don't need the money. That's the awful thing. I, I, I'm so... I used to go down the lanes in Brighton, you know, and the dealers, and what they used to... And my daughter knows this, you know, certain place in the lanes, you know, art shop. You go in with a really nice piece of work, you know, on an old canvas, and you go, how much you want for it? And you say, 200? They go, give you 50. Knowing that you have to take it because you're, you know, you're, financially you're stuck. Yeah. Anybody want to buy a duck? <laughs> It's, it's, I did it. It's original. Anyway. Any more questions? Yes. Just there. Go on then. Um, Hi. Thanks so much for a fascinating talk this evening. You say that you'd do it all again. When you were doing it, was there any difference in your mind as to who was buying it? Whether it was a millionaire who made all their money from oil and gas or someone who I was mind? buying it with tax it money? To. What was that? Do, do, do I mind who, it, who I sold it to? Yes. What do you mean? Did, was I feel guilty about, you know, probably a poor... No. No, I didn't really. I, I mean, no, I didn't. No. I, what's that sort of... Yeah. yeah. I mean, suppose you're mostly going to auction houses by the end, or yeah. were you saying more direct? Oh, you? I hit a few galleries in, cool, in, in Bond Street, yeah. But we used to do it all over. We used to do Canterbury, Manchester. You know, it was exciting. You know, really. I know it was wrong, and, but it was exciting, you know. And I would do it again. I wouldn't, I wouldn't hesitate. But I still paint now, and I still love it, you know. Anyway. I mean, when you started, was it... You obviously loved doing art, but was it sort of driven by this feeling of necessity for, like, stealing the clock and the chandelier? You needed it, you need, so that's why you did oh, it. Oh, I needed that buzz, yeah. yeah. You don't know what it's like to sort of uh, hit, hit a dealer with something that... I, I remember once I, I loaded up eight paintings in the back of a Volkswagen. I didn't know where the hell I was going, and I just travelled up north, and I'd, do an, an, I'd go into an antique shop, but I used to, used to change my... I used to play, I've got a painting here, could you have a look? It was left to be by an old granny. It, not like, hello, sir, I've got all this stuff. But, and, that, and I think, right, I've just done that, and i got 500 quid for it, and I'd do another one, another one. Yeah, that's how it used to be. Yeah. Great. Anyone else? Yes, it's at the front. <laughs> um, you said that it takes a lot of blagging to, to sell a fake. Is that the lady with the pretty eyes? <laughs> it is, yeah. Hi. Um, you said it takes a lot of blagging to sell a fake. How did you get the confidence to blag to so many people I didn't hear take that. that much money? How did you get the confidence? I've got an interpreter. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about it. Bloody dead. I should be in an old people's home, shouldn't I? <laughs> How did you get the confidence to blag? to so many people. Oh, I've, I've been, haven't I been like my darling daughter knows I've always been like, haven't I, darling? I've always been good at it, yeah. I suppose really, I, I, what it was, it was Bernardo's made you very streetwise. Mm. Absolutely. You know, all the little tricks of... Uh, Bernardo's was tough. I, I don't know if I can tell... No, I won't tell that story. That's a bit near the mark, I think. No, I won't do that. I'm not going to tell you the skid mark one, no. I'll find that in my next book. You know. Okay. <laughs> so, I Shall I? Yes. Yeah. I will. Right. Now, you know in a home, right, you get a dormitory, right? I was in Lincoln, and there was a schoolboy who was Bartlett with his associate called Stucky, 
Right, and he was a nasty bugger. And he kept away from me because I had a fella that could have a row, and I could as well. So Bartlett didn't bother us. We were keen, we were keen on drawing. And Bartlett, on a Saturday night, he'd get bored. He's got all this little, little group round him. They go, we're going on a gold hunt, right? We're looking for gold. And what he was checking for, skid marks in underpants, right? Sorry. <laughs> I'm not, they're all disgusted. <laughs> He did. And he'd go around. I used to pick on this certain boy, but they used to fit him up. They used to go and put extra on it, and he'd make, oh, that was awful. That was uh, the bullying side of it. You know, mm. that was, they were bad. They were bad. So do you think sort of the gift of the gab came from getting out of that kind of situation? Yeah. Well, I think coming home and, you know, good to see my mum, but I didn't like my mum's boyfriend, so I did. He beat me up one night. He thought I'd screw my mum's gas meter, which I didn't. And that's when I went up to London, I, and I stayed away for God knows how many years, you know. And, uh, yeah. Did you ever, like, go back and sort of visit where you were for, like, keep in contact and told people about, oh, Mum, I do this now? <laughs> or or did, is that never done? Uh, my mum, bless her, she's looking, saying, yeah, go for it, son. That's what my mum would say. <laughs> Have a go. It, it is, it's, all, it's just survival, that's all it is. Oh, there, horse racing there, look. I don't do those now. I don't do those now. Mm. There was another question at the front, I thought I saw. Oh, yeah. Go on, then. I was going to ask uh, whether you expected to get caught when you were doing the board. Well, yeah, I did, actually, very much so. I, I, I got nicked. I did, um, I did two Samuel Palmers, and I had a, a guy called Otto, who was a dealer, and I said to him, you've got two Samuel Palmers, go and, go and sell them, you know, push them out. And he got so lazy, he wanted to go back to Germany for Christmas, so he sold his paintings in the same gallery. They sussed it out. He, gave, he blagged me and gave me away at Cricklewood. I'm in there doing another two. The fraud's got to rush in the back door, bang it down. You know, I've got two on the bloody easel, and he's going, what's all this then? I said, I don't know, I've never seen them before, so bang away. I've got 18 months on that one. Yeah. Was that your longest sentence, 18 months? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And each, so the whole thing where you continue to do copies and to yeah. get underhand at all. I tell you what, I got gated once though. You know what that is? That's when you come out, you've already done your stretch and they, they've got you for another one outside. I came out of Dorchester and went, hello Max, he said, uh, uh, enjoy your holiday. I went, yeah, it was, Mug- it was Mugglesham his name was. And he went, uh, he said, I think we need to talk to you again. So he took me down there, turned to the holding cell and I got, down, I got another six months. Jeez. Just before bloody Christmas as well. Christmas in Nick is awful. Yeah. Who else for more questions? Yes. Yeah, Brent, in the middle of that. Well, they're all coming in now. Is there a, are there any artists here tonight, do you think? I think aspiring ones, probably. Hello. Hi. So you mentioned that um, oftentimes, like, the people who would sell your art after you, like sold it to them would make a lot more money. Um, I'm sure we can all relate to um, upscaling over the course of our careers and like making more. At which point in your career did you start making the most money and kind of like where did you learn how to like get your worth as an art forger slash artist? I think you know when I did the ceramic ducks it all went there. (laughs) I was I was on a going nowhere you know I was doing new canvas and you know, I was doing horse racing and, you know, but then this, then suddenly, I'll tell you what, everything changed because you do a TV, I did Vice, I did radio, and I think now you become like a novelty, you know, like a, a sort of, a, you know, the Beau Brummel of Burgess Hill, or, you know, and you get noticed and that sort of thing. And I, yeah, and I'd, I earn money now because, um, because, well, I'm not, I'm on the, do you know what, it's called the last train to San Fernando, is that when you haven't got long left, it's the long train you're on, well I'm up with the bloody driver, not in the carriage, I'm up there with it, so I'm going to do as much as I can, I'm going to um, have a good time, sort of go out, this is lovely meeting you lot, honestly, I do this for, no- well I'm doing it for nothing anyway, so don't worry. <laughs> I got a glass of wine in a hotel, I'm good, but I love this. I did Mensa. Now, what am I doing in Mensa? You know, I did a, f- I was sold out there. I'm not bragging, but I was sold out. Because, you know, you know, I'm not the best forger in the world. That's why I don't like being classed as the best, because I'm not. I'm just a humble, oh, I'm, an, I'm, I'm a craftsman that lost his way. Hey, 
<laughs> How good is that? That's uh, a lovely dude. poetic way of putting it, it feels yeah. like. Um, I've got some one really sort of quick final question, and it's, I ask everyone that comes here this, right. is there a book or a movie that you would recommend to the audience? Well, mine for a start. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, oh, can I say that? Yeah, you can say, you can say. Frank Harbour, who was in Long Stock and Two Smoking Barrels, is doing the script for my film. And I heard, it, maybe it's possible, John, that we get Charles Dance to start it off. We, that's a rumour, we don't know that'll come about. But Frank Harbour, we rang me today in the hotel, he's all keen, he's doing it, and we're loving it, you know. Are we going to say the name of it, John? I think you should, buddy. Yeah, it, is it Chasing Caravaggio? That's the one. I don't know. I've got to work that one out. Because <laughs> if you say Chasing, it means I only do Caravaggio, but I've covered everybody. I've faked everybody. You know, more, yeah, I, honestly. I, and I don't, I'm not showing off, but I really, anything you put in front of me, I'll fake it. It's as simple as that. I've nothing, no fear. I mean, look, you know, you do a Caravaggio, big black 4030 canvas, right? You look, I don't even grid it off now. I just do it with a white, what we call white Conte pencil, right, you know, and I love it. To, to get that, now, have you heard of an artist called Van Meegan, who faked during the war? Mm -hmm. Right, he used to melt down um, a Bakelite and mix it with his oil to get the cracking. I thought, shit, I could have given him, oh, sorry, I could have given him that. He wouldn't <laughs> have done all that rubbish with Bakelite. No, I've got the black canvas in front of me. I get very sort of quite, you know, emotional about it. Mm. And, uh, and I start drawing it out. I can't wait to go back to it. I've got one on the easel now, of a, like a Caravaggio, no, a, a dog picture. And I've got it all drawn out. And I think when I go back, you know, and I think I'm going to do it. But it's, it's a very, I get up in the night and I think, I'm, you know, to, to, have you seen The Taken of Christ? It's a beautiful one with that armour, you know, that, and make it stand out. And, you know, I love those little touches, you know. And, uh, yeah, get very excited. Is there any painting, so I thought one more, is there any painting that you haven't done that you always wanted to do, or an uh, artist that you... Salvador Dali, I think. Really? Yeah. Why, why that? I don't know. I, I've been asked to do them, and I think, hmm, I don't know. Unless it's the right nice piece of reference, and I don't think I'm interested. Great big skinny sweet kids. I love it. I love his work, mind you. Yeah, Caravaggio... Oh, I'm going to tell you another thing. Um, anybody heard of Jack Vetriano? Yes, right. OK, well, I went to a book signing, and I thought, I wanted this book sign, I wanted his bloody signature, right? So I go in there pretending I'm Scott, like, see you, Jimmy, and all that rubbish. I go out to him and go, I, I thought, I told him I was from Glasgow, no, Edinburgh. And he said, do you paint? I said, well, I dabble a bit. And I thought, I said, can you do your signature? He did it on the back. I think, right, that's it, I've got his signature, bang on. <laughs> You just trace it off when you go back. I think that is a brilliant note for us to end on. So thank you so much, Max. I'm enjoying me. Thank you. Max.